my name is Michelle and I'm a part of iRefresh Ministries and this is my special friend Visa and um, today we're going to tell the story um, of how God brought her into my life and she has a beautiful testimony and so she's here to share that today. Uh, she came to our home about 10 years ago through a ministry called Samaritan's Purse uh, they have a, a program called Children's Heart Project, and they find children in uh, countries where they don't have the opportunity to have heart surgery. Um, so they find kids with uh, heart defects, and then they find hospitals in the United States that will do their um, surgery at no charge, and then physicians that are willing to work along with them. So uh, someone in our church asked if, us if we were interested in hosting families to do this, and um, we agreed to do it. And Vasari was actually one of the last um, groups that stayed with us. That, again, that was about 10 years ago. Um, and so she came to Tulsa uh, to get her heart fixed at St. Francis. Dr. Rainey uh, and Dr. Kimberling were doctors, uh, the surgeon and the cardiologist involved. And uh, she came with another girl from Kosovo. They're both from Kosovo. They're moms and an interpreter. And the interpreter is a believer. Um, and her both families uh, are Muslim and you know the hope is that we could share the gospel with the families while they're staying with us and really just show them the love of God and so would you like to kind of share from there just how it was when you came and yeah so when you're living in a Muslim country you are offended by Christ you you don't like the cross you don't like it Jesus, we don't like any of that. So I was like that before I came um, at your house. And I remember one time we had this Catholic magazine. I don't know how it ended up in our house. And I was just so tired of seeing it everywhere in my house. I just took it and I, I destroyed it and I threw it in the garbage because I, I didn't want to see anything about Jesus because that's how I grew up. That's what I knew. But then I come to your house and the Lord just does something in my heart because um, I, I think it was the way you just all loved me and my mom and what I saw. I had never seen anything like that, the love you gave us. And that changed my heart. So I go back home a different person. And I like going to this Muslim family and I'm surrounded by Muslim traditions, but I'm like, no, this Jesus, he's going to help me. So I would just keep on praying to him, even though I didn't understand a lot, I didn't understand the power of the cross or who, what he means to me, but I just said, he's real, because I, I, he did something in my heart while I was there. So I just did that. And yes, the interpreters, they were Christians, so they, we kept in contact with them. And um, for a few years, I didn't go to their church or didn't do any of that, so I just, for like two or three years, I just did the same thing. I didn't have a Bible, didn't know much, but I would just be praying to Jesus. But because I had that um, Muslim mentality, I think, I thought that whenever I would pray, I just wanted to go in my room and just be alone with him. But I thought that that's wrong. I thought that I needed to go and pray in public when people can see me, but I just didn't feel it in my heart. I wanted to, it to be personal. And so I would just, I felt guilty for like three years because I was praying that way. And one time I just, I just said, God, I, I, I feel so guilty that I'm loving this. I'm loving to pray in private and, and just open my heart to him. And then I just finished my prayer and I just get up and I, by this time I had a Bible. So I just go and open my Bible and I just open it. And it opens in the book of Matthew. And my eyes are reading verse 6, which says, But you, when you pray, you go into your room and close the door, and the Father who sees what's done in secret will reward you publicly. publicly. And I was like, wow, like, what is this? Because like, to, to live in guilt for such a long time and then to just find out that you were doing exactly what pleases God's heart. Mm -hmm. So that brought so much peace to me. And I just like, I went from there. And then... Um, the interpreters one night, they invited me if I would like to go and um, be part of this Christian uh, conference, which was uh, 
uh, happening in a, in a country near us? And I said, yes, that was the first time I ever went back to a church or a conference besides when I was here in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. So I just go there and, and I spend three days there and I'm learning so much more about Jesus and what he means to me and for my life. And and the, the pastor at the end, he said like, um, is there anyone in here who would like to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior? And I knew in my heart that I just had to stand up and say me and let him lead me into the prayer of salvation. Even though I, I had accepted Christ while I was at your house, but I just, um, I never remembered that part. But I didn't, I didn't stand up. But when I went home, I just went into my room and I said, yes, Lord, please come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. So then these interpreters, we get even closer together and they invite me more to their churches and to the project that we had. So I would just go and, and just learn more and more and grow more and more. Mm -hmm. And during this time, um, we didn't have a whole lot of communication. I don't know if it was maybe through Facebook, but um, I had communicated some with the interpreters because we had become friends as well. So um, I was encouraged in know, knowing that you, you know, were going to church and and getting involved and um, so that was a huge blessing for us to know that um, and I guess as the time time went on her um, heart things weren't going well her blood pressures were skyrocketing um, and she was going to need another procedure done and was, when she was here they had told her that she probably would because as you grow, um, your blood vessels grow and she needed um, mm -hmm. things enlarged. And So between the time she was here and the time that all these problems were going on and she was in the hospital, things had kind of changed here in Tulsa with the hospital and the doctors and that door was no longer open for her to be able to come. Um, and in my heart though, I just knew that she was supposed to come and when she she started instant messaging me at that time and she had reached out to me because she said I'm in the hospital you know my blood pressures um, 200 over you know 100 and something and she was having you know um, I mean you can stroke when things get to be to that uh, point and I am kind of a laid-back person I mean I, I love to pray for people um, I'm, I'm just not one of those that um, sometimes pushes through things probably like, like I should, but for some reason I just felt like, no, she needs to come. And so in October of 2016, she contacted me with all this that was going on with her physically. And um, so I just started praying, we started communicating, um, and I reached out to the cardiologist here again. And at that time, he's like, I. There's not anything I can do. I reached out to other physicians that I knew, um, and nothing was really working. But as we were instant messaging back and forth, God would give me a scripture each time. I would tell her what was going on, and some of it sounded, you know, a little bleak. But I was like, "But this is what God says about you. But this is what God says." And um, so, it just seemed like God started opening one small door after another, mm -hmm. and. Um, and it was, it was like we got in to see the cardiologist. I talked to him face to face. We, um, all this paperwork needed to be filled out, and then the paperwork would get lost, and then I wouldn't hear from the doctor in a, a month. He's on vacation, and so finally, from October to May twenty second was the day that she had an appointment made to see the doctor here in Tulsa. Um, so. I mean, I wish I could just share every um, conversation that we had because God was so in that and doing mm -hmm. so much in your heart. And would you share, like when you were in the hospital, what was going on when, when I was giving you this message? Yes, I will try and, you know, see what I can do here. And then, oh, no, this isn't working out. Just the trust that you had in the Lord at that time. Yeah, so... I'll just go back to the first time when I came at your house. Because, like, I, I did not have a easy childhood, childhood I, because when you're living with heart problems, you're so li limited, you, you just, you can't do everything that other children do. And I never understood why did I have to get born with heart problems, why did I have to go through that? But once I, God just brought me here to Tulsa and I, I hear about the gospel and I hear about him, 
I just remember that the moment I just heard about him and I just accepted him in my heart, I just knew that the reason I was born with heart problems is because that was just my way of salvation. And to me, those heart problems are my greatest blessing because it, it was just how I was supposed to get saved. And I always knew so that time was really hard, those seven months when I just started feeling really bad and then nothing could be done for me in Kosovo. I, I, it, was, it was very scary, but I just always remembered that, that how God has always used my heart disease, my heart problems to just keep me closer to his heart. So that was one thing that I always remembered. And I just told God, I don't know what door you're going to open, I don't know what you're going to do, but I told him, I would love if I could go to the States because I know I want to see again these people. I, I, wanna, I don't want to just go in a country where I, I will just get healed and that's it, but I want something from you. I, I want to grow more. I want to understand more. But I just, I just left it in the, in, into his hands. But yeah, my blood pressure was so high and, and I, I missed my uh, school. I couldn't go to college. I was stuck in that, my house all day. Um, it would go so high, it would scare me. But um, God was just like speaking to me during that time and one thing he just gave me is I was reading this devotion and it says when, when you are praying are you, are you giving your worries, your burdens to God or are you transferring it? And what I had been doing that whole time with my fear was me just giving it back, giving those words to him. But as soon as my blood pressure went high, I was just getting all these words back and like, I'm so worried, I don't want to get a stroke, I'm scared. And I was very scared because we don't have very many good medical access there and I just didn't want to die because they can do nothing for me. So that spoke to me and that night I just made a decision that God, I will just give you all my fear, I will give you all my worries, I will give you all my burdens, and I will transfer those to you, and when I transfer those to you, I know I cannot get them back. So whenever, the next time I would get high blood pressure, I said, I will not worry about a stroke, I will not worry what's going to happen with me, because I know you take care of us, I know you take care of me, I know you've promised that you're going to heal me, and you're going to make a way for me, for me, so I just said, I'll just... Um, worry. I will. I'll just take my medicine, and I'll let you worry about my strokes or anything else that I can get. So that brought so much peace to me. And I just, in the beginning, it was really hard to wait. But he was just speaking to me and just, uh, just telling me to let me carry your burdens and be free and just trust me. So at the end, it was like I loved waiting. Because like, you were just messaging me and you were like, God is opening doors for you. And I was like, wow. And I just, I was so, I was filled with so much love to see how, how the Lord was just coming through for me like that and just opening this door. And it was just like a miracle how it happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, it really was. And when she came um, to the U.S., you know, we hadn't seen, I hadn't seen her since she was a little girl. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I know you don't feel like you were maybe that deep in the Lord when you came. You were just hungry. You wanted to learn more of the mm -hmm. Lord. But she was deep in the Lord. I mean, she just had just like she was a ray of sunshine. Um, and I know at that time, I, I feel like I'm, I've always been a willing vessel, um, but not like a biblical scholar or not, a, not someone with great words. Um, I'm a picture person. So anytime anything that comes out of my mouth that is full of wisdom, it, I'm like, that was not me, that was God. This whole time that she was with us, which was ended up being a total of two months, um, it was like God had downloaded into me so much. And we would sit out on the back patio and just, just so many things from the Lord, He spoke through me. I felt like a mom, you know, almost a spiritual mom to you. Yeah. Um, and it was such a blessing to me because I was like, wow, where did that come from? <laughs> um, so that was very, a very special time for us. And um, I know you were growing in the Lord. We um, got to come to iRefresh. And that's one thing that I've, I, I forgot to mention because that was so crucial in that seven-month period of getting you here was um, coming to uh, my prayer group on Tuesday mornings and just um, asking for prayer for Vasari. And... Um, praying through that and you know then we'd see one breakthrough and we'd be like praise God and then we'd run into another obstacle and 
um, see another breakthrough. So uh, God just worked through much, so much through prayer and um, anyway, getting you here and then having you have the opportunity to meet with these ladies mm -hmm. too and pray with you. And um, do you remember there were some words spoken of you at one of the meetings? Do you remember like when you were prayed for um, that, uh, I don't remember if it was at the small Bible study or at the big I refresh when uh, you were prayed for. Did God give you a word or? Um, yes, he gave me a lot of words, but one that just, um, just stuck with me was um, in Romans 12 where he said, uh, present your life as a living sacrifice for me because that's your proper way of living. Because all this time I had lived as a Christian, but I didn't talk much about it because like, they don't receive that well back in my country. And I, I felt so guilty that I didn't have the strength to just stand in front of people and tell them, I love Christ and I, I don't care what you think. Mm -hmm. But, so he gave me that first, but when, you, but I just knew that he would use this time to just um, sp speak to me and, and, and keep his promises. Because when you live like that as the only Muslim in your family, you, when you're going through difficult times, you wish you could just have a parent who, you know, just knows the Lord and you can sit and talk with them and have a parent who will just, you know, fill your word, fill you with, you know, the word of God. And I didn't have that and I missed that so much because I was going through difficult things. And I just thought that I would, I would get that one day when my mom would get saved because I believe she's going to get saved one day. But then I come here in the States and then he, he gives me that through you, because mm -hmm. you are indeed my spiritual mom. And I'm like, he's so amazing how he takes care of us like, like that. So mm -hmm. I, I get that now, the, the, um, the, the love from my Christian parents. So he is so faithful. He had a purpose in that. And I know too, you, um, when you came, we talked about, have you been baptized? Mm -hmm. And um, if not, would you like to be? And you said, I would love to be baptized, but, um, I feel like if I do, I have to do that publicly in front of my parents and, you know, everyone should know. And um, when we told you it was, it was okay if you just got baptized here and it wasn't, you know, uh, publicized. Mm -hmm. um, and you were like, really? I can get baptized? Like, my parents don't have to know at this time. And so anyway, she got baptized in our pool while she was here. And um, yeah, it was really a, a special moment, I think, because she was afraid Think, she, thinking that if she had to keep it from anyone, that it, it wasn't okay in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. And I know there will be a time where you will be able to share that with your family. Mm -hmm. um, but from there, um, God did amazing things. She had another procedure and, and it was effective. Um, and I think Dr. Kimberling was even very surprised at how well you did after yeah. that because all he had to do was go in and enlarge the stent that yeah. was already um, in her aorta. Yeah. Back in my country, they were telling me, um, you're so sick, you're, you need to go to like this big cardiac center somewhere in the States, and they're gonna need to put this artificial part in your heart, heart and all that stuff, and that really, really scared me. So I, I came here for that in last year. I thought that's what gonna, what's gonna happen to me, but no, he was able, the doctor was able to just fix my heart with just a stand enlargement, and he said, um, this is only going to like make your symptoms a little a little bit better, but you're gonna have high blood pressure your whole life because you were born with it. You're gonna have to have the same symptoms you you've had, but just less. And that when when I when he gave me those news, I felt so sad for a little bit. You know, just like I really don't want to live like that, God, because I want to be able to serve you and not worry about my health. But then she was like, that's just. A doctor's report that's not God's report I was like that's right that's not God's report so I I go and have my procedure and since the since I've had that procedure I never again had high blood pressure ever so God just healed me because during that difficult time of fear he just gave me this verse where it says I will heal you I will restore health to you and I will heal you of your wounds and I kept that verse close to my heart and I believe that 
who was going to do that and he did just that. He has healed me completely. He used all my heart problem problems to just keep me closer to him and, and teach me and, and build me and that I could I would go through it over and over again. Mm-hmm. Yes, and um, she's back here a year later, which we um, maybe can talk about that another time, but uh, she saw the cardiologist yesterday and he told her she could go off all medications mm-hmm. and that yeah, yeah, that her heart was beautiful. Was beautiful. So, um, yeah, God has done amazing things yeah, in that. It's and for me, um, Vasari has been a, a real blessing to me in helping me grow and um, just learn to obviously be a willing vessel, but trust in Him to download into me what's needed for the time, teaching me to. Um, push through to get into his word and every time I would open his his word it would be something specific for that day and I was able to share with you so much um, mm-hmm. in yeah. the time where we were trying to get you over here to get your heart fixed yes. that was crucial. Um, yeah and so what's great now is when Vasari went back um, to Kosovo after just spending time learning of the Lord more growing in your faith um, she was really on fire for the Lord and was able to reach out to family members um, Mm -hmm. and several of them have actually received Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful story. I would like to encourage all those who are watching this today that God has created you for a purpose. And um, it's important not to see what someone else's purpose is and try and measure up with that, but God has created you for a unique purpose. And for me in this story, um, I just wanted to be available. I, I was available, I wanted to love on people. I'm a nurse, so um, in the healthcare field, I um, my heart was kind of to be in that setting and God totally opened a door for that. And Vasari being in Kosovo, mm-hmm. um, needing her heart fixed, um, but also being hungry for the Lord and um, us having the opportunity here to share the word with her and help her to grow in her relationship with Christ. Um, God can use you wherever you're at. And this was such a God connection that I could have never conjured up on my own. And he opened so many doors. And it's so important that we link arms with other believers and um, there's power in prayer. and. I'm just grateful for the, the women I refreshed that came together with me to pray with me and uh, really help make this happen.